Right, hello everybody. Today I'm going to do some bot building for beginners. I'm going to talk about chat fuel. I'm going to talk about JSON. And I'm going to talk about APIs. So my name is Mark Littlemore. You can find me online on Twitter at Mark Littlemore, Mark at MarkLittlemore.com, MarkLittlemore.com website. All of the things you can see on the screen now in the chat fuel and bot list Facebook groups, you'll find me there. Um, I wanted to make a little video because I keep seeing lots of confusion online, especially with people who aren't necessarily developers, about what JSON is, about what APIs are, and how you integrate them with the chat fuel API block. I really want to help beginners to get started. So in terms of who I am, um, as I said, my name is Mark. I've been a developer for 25 years. I've worked in loads of different programming languages. I did 20 years of C, C++ for writing video games, C Sharp, PHP, Python. Nowadays, I mainly write Node.js and JavaScript. Um, and more recently, I've become interested in conversational user interfaces and bots and how they can be used to in e-commerce and things like that. I find that really fascinating. So today, I want to try and simplify everything for you. So let's split it all up. Firstly, what is JSON? So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And the idea is that it's a minimal, readable format for structuring data. So that means it's easy for humans to read and write, but also it's structured really nicely for computers to read and for computers to generate. Um, it actually represents a JavaScript object, but it's what we call serializable. So that means we can transmit it between a server and an application. In this case, we'll take it from a server and we'll give it to ChatFuel for your bot. So it's really quite simple. Here's a website called jasonblob.com, which I'd advise you to use to try and generate some JSON, just have a, a play around with it. It's basically what we call key value pairs. So if you can see on the screen here, we've got lots of things in, in strings, in quotes. These are the keys. So array, boolean, null, number, object, and string. They're the keys. They then have a value. Now the value can be a string like this. This is hello world string. It can be a number like one, two, three there. It can be an object, so it can be another object here. So if you see those curly brackets there, that's another object. Inside that, we can have another set of data. Um, it can be arrays. So here we have an array, and this has an array of numbers. An array is like a list. Or we can have, uh, what else, booleans. So that can be a true or false value. And the other thing we can have, we can have nulls in there as well, but you probably won't need these for your chat fuel bots. Okay, so this seems like really random data. So let, let's take this all away and let's write some data so it looks like sort of real world data. Okay, so if you imagine we're going to create something called uh, name Mark Littlemore. Okay, so I've created a key called name. So it's in quotes. We need a colon after it. And then in quotes, I've got another string. That's my name. There we go. So let's put my age in there. So what's my age? My age is 45. There we go. And um, the good thing is you'll see on the side there, um, there we it says bad string. It's because we haven't put anything in. So this JSON blob website is really handy for validating your um, JSON. There's also one called jsonlint.com, which is really useful. But if, you, if you're using this website, it gives you the, the JavaScript object on the right, and it validates your data on the left. That's really, really handy. Okay, so let's pretend um, I've got a list of likes, and that can be an array. Okay, so inside that array, we'll put some strings. So what do I like? I like computers. I'm a developer. I like uh, bots. I like music. There you go. I like my family. Great stuff. Okay, so inside that, let's put another object. Let's have a friend object. Oops, I nearly forgot the quotes. If I do that, um, it'll complain that there is a bad string. Don't forget to put around your um, around your keys. You need to put in um, quotes. So okay, we'll have another object here. So this is my friend. So I made a bot called Santa Giftbot, and he's my friend. Um, who knows how old he is? He's at least a thousand Santa, isn't he? Um, and what does he like? Um, okay, let's have a look. So he likes Christmas, obviously. He likes uh, giving gifts. Obviously, he likes giving. He's a very generous man. Okay, so that's the sort of JSON format. So that's the thing you should understand first, that it's just a standard format. It's not specific to bots. It's not specific to web APIs. It's just a standard format that you can use to transmit data. So that object there, if we open this all up, you can see all of the object there. Um, and that's, that's just the JSON represents this JavaScript object. Okay, great stuff. So what is an API then? Well, an API, it stands for Application Programming Interface. 
and it defines how software components should interact. So as a developer, I could write a piece of software um, and I could say, here's how you use it to another developer and I define what the interface to it is. Um, but in, in a lot of cases, especially with like chat fuel and the bots, um, an API actually represents a web API from a server. So it defines how the outside world should talk to a web server to create, retrieve, update or delete data from some sort of external data source. So that could be something like, um, like a database. So let's have a, a quick look at uh, sort of an API. So this is the open weather map. Um, it has an API here. So let's just make this a little bit bigger. Let's see if you can see that. So you would call api.openweathermap.org um, slash data. So let's just have a look here. This is going to give us an example call of some data. Okay. So this is giving us the weather in London, it looks like, in the UK. Um, here, this is the URL that we would use. Um, it's endpoint is slash weather. So it's got the uh, domain name there. And then we've got some, um, what we call the endpoint there. Okay. So that defines what we need to call in order to get this data. So as you can see, it returns JSON here. So it returns that at the moment it's drizzly in London. We're in the UK, it's always drizzly. Um, so that would be the sort of thing you need to call if you're calling external data. Okay, but let's have a look at ChatFuel now. So, so ChatFuel has an expectation of data in its JSON um, API block. So let's have a look at the documents. Here it defines the JSON API blocks. Just make that a little bit bigger as well. Okay. So what it expects is a type of request and a URL. So chat fuels JSON API block. Let's have a look. Let's create one in here. Um, I'll do a text reply. Yeah, there we go. We've got a JSON uh, API block. So it expects two, there's two different types of requests. This is a HTTP request. There are actually a few more, but chat fuel only supports get and post. Get is generally when you're retrieving data. And post is often used for when you submit a form, for instance, you, you are sending data to the server. In most cases, I think most people will probably want to do a get. There might be cases when you want to send data as well, and you, then you do a post. Um, most APIs that are retrieving data are probably get requests. Okay, so there's an expectation of a format, a data format here. So this is what ChatFuel expects. So this is if you wanted to send text back to ChatFuel, you would send it in this format. Okay, so let's have a look how we can do that. So we can create our JSON really simply. Remember before we had JSON blob. So this web website is very handy because it allows you to create JSON data and visualize it. It also allows you to save it. Okay, so we can save this data. Okay, and it's given us a URL here. Now the really great thing now is we can take that URL. If we take the URL and rather than just the, the um, ID that we've got there, if we stick slash API in front of it there, it returns us the data we've just generated. So why don't we test this out with the chat fuel API? Okay, cool. Okay, so we've got our URL here, uh, that one there, sorry. Um, at the moment, this isn't going to work because this, is, this isn't valid data for um, a chat fuel. So let's have a look at the format it expects. Just close those tabs down there. Okay, so messages. Okay, so it's going to expect it in this format. So what we do is we just take this, get rid of all this data here. Right, okay, so we've got two messages. Yeah, see there's an array of messages there. Uh, welcome to chat fuel rocket. So okay, I'm gonna say to welcome to Mark's bot. Um, and we're gonna say, how are you today? Okay, we'll save that. Okay, if we hit this API now, endpoint, we've done a get request on here and look, it's in our format, brilliant, okay. So let's have a look at our chat fuel dashboard. So I've got this set of quick replies here. I'm just gonna test, text and image. I was testing some others earlier, video and audio. Um, so in our text reply, we've got the URL, which we've defined here, and we've generated the data here. Okay, let's see how that works then. Let's go to my test bot, which is called Mark Bots, and we'll do get started. It's going to run through my chat fuel uh, blocks. It's going to do the welcome message. And it's going to do my, my JSON choices. So we've got my JSON choices here. Okay. So we've created this text reply, which should go to our API now. Let's check it out. Text. It's going to go to our API. Welcome to Mark's bot. How are you today? Brilliant. It's got the data from there. 
Okay. Let's create a new one. Have a look at the documentation. Okay. I'll send an image this time. Just cut and paste this. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let me take my most favoritist GIF ever. Um, I'm a big fan of this GIF. Let's go. There we go. We can save this. Okay, so we've got a new new URL here. Now remember what I said? We have to take it. We go into our image reply here. Let's add JSON API block. And remember I said we needed to add API there. Otherwise, if you don't add the API, it just allows you to edit the JSON data. Okay, so when we hit that with API now, let's do that and just test it. So it should return us that JSON data. So the payload is a URL. The type is an image, so this is an image as per the docs. You should always, if you're integrating with any APIs, you always need to read the documentation. Let's have a look. Let's restart my bot. Click start. Okay. Welcome message. Hey, Mr. Bot, let's try image. Fantastic. Yes, it works. Okay, so as you can see, it's really, really easy. All we're doing is we're creating JSON here, yeah, static JSON. We're storing it in JSON blob. It has an API which allows us to send that data back to ChatFuel. ChatFuel then asks for it as part of your chatbot flow, and that's the URL that you use. And then it's returned to you. And as long as it's formatted as per the ChatFuel documentation, as you can see, you can send video, you can send audio, you can look look up this. Then you'll be able to send that data really easily. So to start with, just start playing with JSON Blob and, and you can get working really, really quickly. I'm going to make another video for you. Um, I'll show you how to easily transform the data from an external API. So that's something else like that weather API that we saw before. Um, I'll show you how to transform that data into ChatFuel's format. Um, and I'll give you a little free server that you can use. Um, you can easily use it on your own projects and we'll explain how that works. So I hope this has been helpful. Ask any question in the YouTube comments below. Ask any questions in the chat fuel forums or the bot list forums um, on, on Facebook. I will answer any questions here to help. If you'd like someone to come and consult on your bots, just give me a shout. Happy to help. All right, take care and I'll see you soon.